So the following example has to do with having multiple genes that all affect a single phenotype but in different ways with some genes epistatic to others. Now, the question starts off with saying in cats, two alleles, BNO at X-linked gene control, whether black or orange pigment is deposited. Now, before we continue, let's just mark that. It says it's X-linked and we have two different alleles, BNO. So we'll mark it by this. We have XB is for black and XO is for orange, right? Now it says a dominant allele at an autosomal gene, uh, big I and little i, partially inhibits the de deposition of pigment, lightening the coat color from black to gray or from orange to pale orange. So we have another gene, it's autosomal, it's either big I or little i, and if you have the big I allele, it'll make whatever black color you had gray and whatever orange color you had pale orange. And if you're homozygous recessive, then it remains black and orange. Now, a dominant allele at the autosomal gene big T, little t determines whether a tabby or vertically striped pattern is present. So, um, by saying or vertically striped, it just means tabby. It's a different way of describing tabby. Well, that's what tabby is. So, you have big T and little t. If you're big T, then you have a tabby pattern. And if you're little t and little t, which are homozygous recessive, then you don't have a tabby pattern. Then the tabby pattern depends on a dominant agouti allele, a big A allele for its expression, with non agouti little a epistatic to tabby. So we have a big A and a little a allele, right? The big A allele, if it's present, will allow the tabby pa pattern to be present as well. If you're homozygous recessive for this, little a, little a, then the tabby pattern won't show up even if you have the big T allele. Now, it says the agouti allele also causes speckled rather than a solid coat color. So this is for speckled, right? If you have this, you're allowed to have speckled colors. And if you have this, but homozygous recessive, then you'll have a solid coat color. So one, for example, like might have little t, little t, so he's not a tabby, but has a big A allele, so he'll be just speckled only. But if they have both, they'll be speckled and tabby. But even if they have the big T allele, but have both the little a alleles, so homozygous recessive for the A allele, for the non-agouti, then even if you have the big T allele, you will still be a solid coat color. Now, Judy... A stray cat gives birth to four cans, right? So Judy has a speckled coat with a small gray and pale orange spots that are distributed in a pattern like that of a tortoise shell. She shows no trace of a tabby pattern. And of the three female offspring, two are solid gray and a third is speckled gray and a light orange like her mother, but also shows traces of a tabby pattern. And the single male offspring is solid gray. Now notice how I've highlighted all three of the sentences and I've stopped and I've changed the color for each description. So for Judy, I gave her a blue. For her two female offspring, I gave her a uh, purple orange, a uh, purple color, and then a bit of a red for her third female offspring, and then yellow for the male. I want to separate those sentences so I make sure to keep track properly of what characteristics each individual has. Now, before we figure out the genotypes of those, we want to answer a few questions. So it says, explain how a tortoise shell pattern arises in cats. That is, how can we have distinct patches of fur with different deposits of pigment? Well, we notice that it's X-linked, right? Well, in females, you have two X chromosomes, right? And so imagine this female has either the black or the orange allele. She has both. Well, since females have two X chromosomes, something called X chromosome inactivation or dosage compensation basically inactivates one of these chromosomes randomly, and it happens differently for each cell. So one cell, for example, might inactivate the orange, the chromosome, the X chromosome that has the orange allele. And so all the cells that arise from this cell line will have the black pattern. But in another cell early on in development, the X chromosome with the B allele might have been deactivated. And so all the cells that come from this cell line will have the orange color. And that's how you get the different colors, right? Now, number two says cat with a tortoise shell pattern usually female, which is exactly what we said. When you have two X chromosomes, one chromosome is actually inactivated randomly. Now, we said, explain why this is the case. We said it's because when you have two X chromosomes, you don't want to have too much activation of X chromosomes and, and the genes. You'll have too much, and so you need to do dosage compensation. Now it says explain why an unusual male tortoise shell male uh, an unusual male tortoise shell male cat is found. He's atypically large and typically not very swift. Now males have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, right? And say for example, this male had the the black allele, right? Now he only has one X chromosome, so he doesn't need to do dosage compensation. He's not going to inactivate the X gene. However, one way in which we can get X chromosome inactivation and create a bar body, so this right here, an inactivated X chromosome is a bar body, right? One way we can get that is by having multiple X chromosomes in a male. And what is that called? When we have multiple X chromosomes in a male like this, XXY, and maybe one is black, one is orange, this is Klinefelter syndrome. And so this male cat is probably undergoing a Klinefelter syndrome, 
and has multiple X chromosomes, and so he has to actually inactivate one of them throughout his body. Now, to start off, we want to figure out what the genotypes that Judy and her kids have and what possibly could have been the genotype slash phenotype of the father that had it. Now, going back to Judy, what did we say? We said that she had a speckled coat. So, if she has a speckled coat, then for a fact, she has the big A allele. Now, we don't know for it what if she has a little A allele or not, but we'll figure that out soon enough. We also said that she had gray and pale orange spots. That tells us two things. One, if she has both gray and orange spots, that means she has both the B allele and the orange allele. And then if, she, if it's gray and pale orange instead of black and regular orange, that means she has the big I allele for sure, but we don't know if she has a little I allele or not. She could be heterozygous or homozygous dominant. And then we also said that she has no trace of a tabby pattern. So since we already know that she has a big A allele, that means if she were to have a tabby pattern, it would be present. But since she doesn't have one, that means she's little t, little t, right? This is her, essentially, genotype. So this right here is Judy. Now, what about her offspring? Well, we said one thing. We said that of the three female offspring, two are solid gray. Now, we said they're solid gray and not solid gray and orange. And so, for the two female offspring, they have to be XB, XB. Two X chromosomes because they're female and they have both black alleles because they don't have any orange colors, even if they're solid. Now, it's also said solid gray, not solid black, which means they also have the big I allele, right? Now, we don't know what their second allele is. Then, it's solid. Now, since it's a solid color, that means they have to be homozygous recessive at the A allele. And then, for tabby, we actually don't know whether they have a tabby pattern or not, because, remember, they have the little A, little A allele, and this is epistatic to the tabby pattern, and so... We know for a fact they have the little t, little t allele from their mom, but we don't know whether they have the big T allele or not. So this is the first two females, right, that Judy had. Now, the third female that explains it has speckled gray and light orange like her mother. Now, it tells us a couple things. It said speckled, right? If it said speckled gray, that means they have the big A allele, but we don't know if they have the little a. It also said that um, they are gray and orange. And I forgot to mention something right here. If we look at the first two females, we said they had a solid color, right? They have two A alleles. If they have two, and they could have only gotten one from their mother, uh, they could only gotten one from a father, for example, the second one had to come from their mother. And so, this first two females right here, this tells us that Judy was actually heterozygote for the A allele, for the pattern of being speckled or a solid coat color. Now, back to the third female that we were speaking of. She had speckled gray and light orange. And since it's gray and light orange rather than black and orange, they have the big I allele, but we don't know the third one, right? And it said that they also show no traces of a tabby pattern. Well, we already know that they're big A, right? And so if they don't show any tabby pattern, then they have to be little t, little t, right? There's no epistatic, uh, like connection going on over here. So this is the third female. Now what about the male that we had, right? Well, it said the single male offspring is solid gray. Now the male offspring has an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. So if they're solid gray, that means they just have the black allele. And since it's gray, not black, they have the big I allele, right? And since they're a solid color, they have the little A allele and the little A allele. And since um, we know that the mom Judy is homozygous recessive for the little t alleles. That means he must have had at least one little t allele, but we don't know whether he had the big t allele or not, simply because they have their homozygous recessive for the speckled or solid coat color. And so this is the male offspring, right? Now, from this, we can start figuring out what could have the father been. Well, let's look at the first two females, we notice that they have two black alleles. They could have only gotten one from their mother, which means that the father, who has an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, must have been uh, black or gray. We don't know. Now, since all the offspring have the big I allele, we cannot really tell whether the father had the big I allele or not, right? Because Judy could have passed that big I allele to all of her offspring, and we don't know what the father could have offered. And so, over here, it's either big I, little I, or just big I something, right? 
or little i, little i. So we don't know whether the father was black or gray. Then we notice that the uh, one of the offspring is homozygous recessive for the speckled or the speckled or solid coat color. And since we know that Judy can only pass on one of the little a alleles, the other little a must have come from the father. And so we know that the father, for a fact, has the little a allele, right? But we don't know if they have the big a allele because we never notice. There's no way for us to check whether one of the offspring, which is this third female, had the big allele, had two big alleles. We know they had at least one, but we don't know if they had two. There's no way for us to check. And so over here, it's unknown. And then in terms of the tabby pattern, we um, noticed that the third female, oh, I'm so sorry. All right. The third female actually has a tabby pattern. I read that no trace of tabby pattern for the mother. The third female actually has a tabby pattern. So this is this right here. Big T, little T. And since we know that the mother, Judy, is homozygous recessive for the big T allele, that means the father must have had the big T allele, but we don't know whether he had the little t or little t, right? Because the mother could have passed on that little t allele, but we don't know whether... Uh, because uh, if the father, for example, was big T, big T, then all the offspring would have the big T allele. Now, can we check? No, we can't because some of the offspring have the little A alleles, and so there's no way. But we know for a fact that he has at least one of the big T alleles. And so, when it comes to the phenotype of the father, we know that he's at least black or gray, right? Since he has the, the B allele uh, on the X chromosome, and we don't know what his, uh, what the genotype was for the I alleles. And then we know that if he was heterozygote for the A allele, he'd be tabby, right? Or solid coat, right? So we don't know if the father was a solid coat or not, but we know that for a fact that if he was a heterozygote, he'd be tabby, since he has the big T allele, and that's how he contributed to the third female. And if he wasn't, then he'd be solid. So it's black tabby, black solid, right? Or gray tabby and gray solid. Those are our options for what the phenotype of the father was. And so this is an example when you have multiple alleles that all affect the same phenotype. And so, yes, over here, the third female, like I made my mistake, she actually is a tabby pattern. And so I made a mistake right there. But this is, this is part of why we try to highlight these details to so make sure that we don't make these little mistakes.